Hey, what is going on guys and welcome to another signal processing tutorial. Today, we're going to tackle the cell and key circuit above. We're going to first find the transfer function in terms of the components C1, C2, R1 and R2. Then, we're going to relate those components to the coefficients on our transfer function above. The transfer function given is a second order Butterworth filter. Before we relate the components, we're going to use the frequency transformations described in the previous video to transform this low pass Butterworth filter with a negative 3 decibel frequency of 1 radian per second into a high pass filter with a negative 3 dB frequency of 1 kilohertz. Okay, let's get started. First things first, we're going to perform the transformation on the Butterworth filter to find ourselves the high pass equivalent with a negative 3 dB frequency at 1 kilohertz. Firstly, we have to convert our 1 kilohertz into radians per second. This is pretty easy, we simply multiply by 2 pi. Therefore, omega naught, or the 3 dB frequency, equals 2000 pi. Okay, so as we're converting from a low pass filter to a high pass filter, we have to make the substitution S equals omega naught divided by S, where omega naught is given by 2000 pi. Let's sub in omega naught over S into our transfer function and find the transformed function. Therefore, T of S equals 1 divided by omega naught, which is 2000 pi, divided by S, all of that squared, plus square root of 2 times 2000 pi, divided by S, plus 1. Okay, we want to get this into standard form, so that means we have to have a coefficient of 1 on our highest degree S term. So, what should we do? Well, the first thing I would like to do, expand these brackets. So we have 1 divided by 2000 pi squared divided by s squared plus square root of 2 times 2000 pi divided by s plus 1. Now, we're going to do the same thing we've done in previous examples and remove those denominators. So let's multiply through by s squared. Doing that gives us t of s equals s squared over... We're going to rearrange the order and we're going to write our last term first. 1 times s squared is simply s squared plus the second term now. The s's would cancel and you'd be left with root 2 times 2000 pi s plus 2000 pi squared as the s squared would cancel. And there we have it. Okay, so now that we know what we're aiming for, why don't we do the analysis of our cell and key circuit and then relate the coefficients that we get to the coefficients in this transfer function. We're not going to need this working anymore, so if you haven't quite got it yet, just feel free to pause the video, just so we can make this a little bit neater. Okay, so why don't we start our analysis now. Keep in mind that while doing the analysis, we're treating this as an ideal op amp, therefore V plus it must equal V minus. Let's start by using a KCL equation at the V1 node. For the current going through C1, we have V in, subtract V1, divided by 1 on SC1, which is the same as multiplying by S. C1. Then we have two currents leaving, the current going through R1 and the current going through C2. The current going through R1 can be given by V1, subtract V out, divided by R1, plus the current going through C2, which can be given by V1, subtract the voltage at this node here, which is simply V out as V plus is equal to V minus divided by 1 on SC2, which is the same as multiplying by SC2. Okay, so we've got ourselves one equation. Let's multiply through by R1 just to remove that denominator, which gives us VI take V1 SC1R1 
equals the R1 cancels and you're left with V1 minus V0 plus V1 take VO times SC2 R1. Okay, so at this point we have an equation in terms of V1, VI and V out, but we want it just in terms of V out and VI. So we can use another KCL equation at our second node here to find another equation for V1 in terms of VI and VO. So let's do that now. We have one current entering the node going through capacitor C2, which can be given as V1 minus the voltage at this point here, VO, multiplied by SC2, as before. Then we have that equaling the current going through the resistor R2, which must be VO, subtract 0, as the other side of this resistor is grounded, divided by the resistance R2. Now, let's multiply through our equation by R2 to remove the denominator. That gives us V1 SC2 R2 take VO SC2 R2 equals VO. Now, as we're trying to find an equation for V1, let's move this VO term to the right hand side and then divide through by the coefficient on the V1 term. This would give us V1 equals VO plus VO divided by S C2 R2. And we have ourselves an equation in terms of V1. Okay, so now we can use these two equations, sub them into one another, and get ourselves an equation in terms of only VO VI and then our component values. Just as a little heads up, this is going to get a little bit messy, but don't worry, it's still just algebra. You've probably seen it all before. You've just got to be really careful when doing your addition and multiplication and whatnot. If you feel like you can get the answer from here, I suggest that you pause it and try and work through it on your own. If you don't get the right answer, that's fine, but just give it a go. If not, we can go through it together now. Okay, so we'll take our second equation and then we'll plug in VO plus VO over SC2R2 anywhere there's a V1. That gives us, we're going to start very far on the left here because this is probably going to be a nice big one. We have VI take VO plus VO divided by SC2 R2. All of that multiplied by SC1 R1 equals V1 which is VO plus VO divided by SC2R2 take VO, the VO simply cancel, plus V1 again, which is VO plus VO divided by SC2R2 take VO and then all of that multiplied by SC2 R1. Then our VO terms cancel again. Okay, so expanding we get VI S C1 R1 take VO S C1 R1 plus VO S C1 R1 divided by S C2 R2 equals VO divided by SC2R2 plus VO SC2R1 divided by SC2R2. Then we can multiply through by our denominator SC2R2 which would give us VI S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 take VO S squared again C1 C2 R1 R2 plus VO S C1 R1 equals VO plus VO SC2R1.
Okay guys, I know at this stage it's looking really messy, but don't worry, we're actually getting fairly close right now. So we're going to take our VO term on our left hand side and add that to both sides, putting it on the right hand side. Let's do that now. That gives us VI S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 equals, let's take VO out the front as well, VO our first term which would be S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 sorry it just came to my attention then that this should also be negative as we're distributing this negative across both terms that also makes this term here negative which would give us plus S as there is one S term here and an S term here and then inside C1 R1 plus C2R1 plus our last term VO which is simply 1 okay sorry if that negative confused you there guys uh, just it's just that one one small term on both sides essentially when we're rearranging here we're taking both our S squared and our S term to the other side so we simply add them to both sides okay let's continue Remember, we're trying to find VO divided by VI. Therefore, we can divide both sides by the content inside these brackets, and then we can divide both sides by VI. That would give us VO divided by VI on one side, and that equals S squared, as the coefficient on our VI would become the numerator, C1, C2, R1, R2, divided by this whole mess here which is S squared C1 C2 R1 R2 plus our S term which is C1 R1 plus C2 R1 plus 1 okay so we found the transfer function for our system again as with the previous example, this doesn't quite match our form yet, but I hope you can see where we're going from here. It's not currently in standard form, so we have to get the coefficient on our s squared term to be 1. So we can do that by dividing through by c1, c2, r1, r2. Doing so yields the left hand side is unchanged, so that is still simply vo divided by vi, which equals s squared on the top as the coefficient would cancel divided by s squared again as we're dividing through by c1 c2 r1 r2 plus our s term which simply becomes c1 r1 divided by c1 c2 r1 r2 the r1 and the c1 would cancel leaving 1 over c2 r2 plus our other term c2 r1 the C2 and the R1 would cancel, leaving 1 divided by C1, R2. All of that multiplied by S plus 1 divided by the term that we're dividing by, C1, C2, R1, R2. Now, this looks much more similar to the form that we needed. There we have it. We can now equate the coefficients in our terms to find values for C2, C1, R1 and R2. Okay guys, thanks for watching. Sorry we didn't quite get to the relating coefficients. Uh, we're out of time unfortunately. Our next video will be dedicated to finding component values to give us that transfer function. Okay, if you had any problems at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you and I'll see you guys in the next one.